Welcome to Johnny on Energy. What we're talking about on this video is installing a programmable thermostat. Now, if you don't know what a thermostat is, the thermostat is the controller on the wall that controls the temperature of your home for the furnace. So heat, it also controls the air conditioning temperature, typically a little round dial where you set a number to and that's what it holds the heat at. It may also be just a digital one now that is not programmable but has that heat number on it. I want to point out a couple things here first before we get into this whole installation process. A programmable thermostat, the way this works and the way it saves you money is, I've got a little chart here and let's assume you got your house at 70 degrees and right over here at this point it's time to go to bed. The programmable thermostat, you set it at a time to turn down the heat. So say you have it set for 11 p.m. and 62 degrees Fahrenheit, at 11 p.m. it turns off the furnace and it allows the temperature to drop to 62 and then controls it at a constant 62 and then say this is 7 a.m. or you want to be up here at 7 a.m. so in some thermostats you set this at 6 a.m. and it begins to heat up and it brings the temperature up to 70 degrees so this is time here and this is temperature here. Now some folks will argue that well that isn't worth doing because this heat up piece here that has to bring the temperature back up that wastes a lot of energy so I really don't save anything. Well the research shows that this cool down time going in here and this heat up time is no savings occur here as the heat is dropping because it's used up in the heat up. So the energy that's saved during the drop is equal to the energy saved during the warm up. The good news is for as long as it's 62 degrees and 8 degrees warmer you're saving a lot of energy. Now you may be saying, 62 degrees, won't I be freezing? Well, you're going to be in bed under your blankets, sleeping, snuggled up there. Hopefully you like that cooler temperature to sleep. That's really what you got to decide. It also can do for when you're not home during the day. So if nobody's home, everybody's out at work, you turn that temperature down during the day. Before you get home, say an hour, it brings it back up and you never notice the difference. And you saved eight or nine hours worth of heating time at a lower temperature during the day. Okay, let's talk about a couple different types of programmable thermostats and just show you some examples. The one I'm holding here, this is a Hunter Set and Save. It's a relatively inexpensive thermostat. And you can see on here, you actually can't see on here, I'll tell you what it is, it says 5 plus 2. What that means is it programs Monday through Friday at the same temperature change points and then Saturday and Sunday you set those two at the same temperature change points. We'll talk a little bit about cost and there's ones that program every day, program less, different break points throughout the day. The other one I'm holding here is this is actually a Honeywell um, programmable thermostat. Same deal, 5.2. This one's a little more expensive than the Hunter. And the reason for that is we're going to be installing this on a heat pump. And that makes a big difference. And I'll tell you why. We talk about this cycle coming down and going up. And uh, you can read up on some of the other sections of the website what a heat pump is. But basically what it does is it extracts warm air, the temperature of the air outside of your home, the outside air temperature, extracts the heat from that and brings it into the house. And everything's good in a programmable thermostat with a heat pump until that temperature starts getting down to around 55, 50 degrees Fahrenheit when it can no longer effectively extract enough heat to heat your house out of the outside air so that your house remains warm. Now these are typically used in southern climates um, where it's a little warmer so not as much time below that 50 degree mark. But when it does get below 50 and it can't extract enough from the outside air, it turns on um, resistance heating element coils that are inside. Basically it's a big toaster and these coils heat up and glow and the air blows over and it brings um, warm air into your house when it's not bringing it from the outside air. Why is that an issue with a programmable thermostat? Well that portion is a lot more expensive to heat with and if in during this heat up cycle it uses a lot of that electrical energy you end up going with a colder temperature and maybe saving no money. So they have special ther um, thermostats that are four different types of products like a um, heat pump that has algorithms in it, in other words computer software, that accounts for that difference in temperature. And that's what this one is here, it's a 5.2. So to give you a kind of comparison, the basic unit, and they change the temperatures four times during the day, do a lot of exotic stuff. This unit was uh, cost about $23. This unit here with the heat pump costs over twice as much at 51. Let's talk a little bit about cost differences. Now, I'm showing here a range of costs for programmable thermostats, actually from $23 to $362 US. How do you get to $362? We'll talk about that and the factors that affect how much they cost. First of all, there's flexibility in programming. 
you'll see things that say on them like 5.2 that we just talked about. You set five days at one level, two at the other. Now those thermostats can change the temperature four times during the day. If you want to change it more times during the day, I'm not sure why you'd want to change it more than four, but if you did, more expensive thermostat. There are a day seven day thermostat, meaning you could set every single day differently and make it do whatever you want. A lot of setup time to do that. Um, so that type of flexibility in there, the more flexibility you have, the more expensive the unit. If we talked about heat pumps, radiant heating, they all behave differently. If the thermostat's sophisticated enough to handle these other products, it's going to be more, or these other heat sources, it's going to be more expensive. Also, it's level of overall sophistication. So, for example, the Honeywell that was over twice as much, instead of you telling it, at 6 o'clock, 6 a.m., start warming it up the house in the hopes that by 7 a.m., when you go to get your shower, it's at 70 degrees. It's smart enough over time to measure for itself how long it took that temperature to come up, and it moves this time around so that you set the time you want it at 70, not when you want it to start going up, and it makes sure from the averages it's seen in the behavior that it gets you there, which is kind of nice. So there's a little more complexity in there and handling different things. And then you can get some other things in there like touch screens, you know, that starts pushing you up into over $100 if you, you know, makes it easier to program where you can touch the screen, a little more expensive to manufacture. How do you get to 362? You really go crazy. Those things have Wi-Fi, wireless connections that hook up to your internet, that talk to your computer and save your data. They measure the out, they have outside air temperature sensors, you name it. It's giving you all kinds of information. So it's kind of a go crazy. Typically, you're probably gonna be spending somewhere if you've got a, uh, you know, a normal gas furnace somewhere in the $30, $35 range, heat pump getting into the $50, $55, and you know, the more features you want to add and the more flexibilities you want to have, you push it up from there. So that's a little bit of an overview of programmable thermostats, and now we're going to jump in and actually install that Honeywell heat pump thermostat um, and show you, how, you know, what it takes. It's not all that hard of a uh, project to do.